Meanwhile, the Republicans have rolled out their new health care plan. And Jason Chaffetz, uh, you know, in a refreshingly honest comment, uh, this is number uh, clip number one here, Chris. Uh, Jason Chaffetz says, uh, you know, okay, you're going to have to start paying for this stuff yourself. The subsidies are going down. The prices are going to go up. So maybe if you're poor, you should just shouldn't buy that new iPhone. Here he is. But access for lower income Americans doesn't equal coverage. Well, we're getting rid of the individual mandate. We're getting rid of those things that people said that they don't want. And you know what? Americans have choices, and they've got to make a choice. And so maybe rather than getting that new iPhone that they just love and they want to go spend hundreds of dollars on that, maybe they should invest it in their own health care. They've got to make those decisions themselves. Right. So, and, and, and the Republican plan is that, you know, if you're young and healthy, they're going to give you $2,000 a year to help buy yourself some health insurance. And, you know, you might be able to buy one of those policies that were legal before Obamacare where you think you have insurance, but in fact, you know, you've got like a $50,000 deductible. You're guaranteed to be wiped out if you get sick, but hey, you're only 20 years old, 25 years old, odds are you're not going to get sick. That was the old scam, right? Well, it's now the new scam, too. And the, and the, the magic word, obviously, Frank Luntz has come out and said, hey, here's the magic word, guys, access. Everybody has access to health insurance. Right. You know, I've got access to a city bus. It drives by every day. I can jump, you know, theoretically, I could jump in and displace the driver, but I don't think he would like it. I'd probably go to jail. Um, let's see. I have access to the bank. There's an HSBC around the corner. There's a Bank of America on the other corner. It doesn't mean they're going to give me money. You know, I have access to the Mercedes dealership here in town. Doesn't mean I can afford to buy one of their cars. But the Republicans love to talk about access because they're not talking about health care. You will always notice the word access. And access means if you can afford it, great. If you can't afford it, you can look at it. You can dream of it. You can think about it. You can fantasize about it. You can pretend you have it. Isn't this marvelous? Uh, that was uh, one of uh, Jason Chaffetz's comments. Uh, here's another one. This is this is Kate, uh, Chaffetz once again using the access. And when he is when he is confronted by the CNN reporter, I thought was this Carol Costello? I'm not real sure exactly who it was. But in any case, when he's he's confronted by the CNN reporter, uh, you know, who says, "Well, does that mean that you know it's going to cost more and fewer people will have coverage?" and and he falls back on the access trope. Here it is. So we're going to try something different. We do think we can expand the coverage so that people have access to a quality health care product that they want. More access, but possibly less coverage. That might be the byproduct. Well, it, it, yes. Yes. I think that's fair. Yes. Less coverage. More access and less coverage. Oh, very, very strange. <sighs> very strange. Meanwhile, Planned Parenthood, they, they're trying to defund Planned Parenthood. And what astonishes me is the big lie that, that Paul Ryan is using to, to pitch this thing, right? I mean, you know, he's been trying to defund Planned Parenthood forever and, you know, to, to suck up to, to, you know, the right-wing voters, basically. And Paul Ryan, here's, this is, this is, he says, and I quote, for every Planned Parenthood, there are 20 federal community health centers. They're vastly bigger in network. There are so many of them, and they provide these kind of services without all the controversy surrounding this abortion issue. And that's, plan, that's Paul Ryan saying, for every Planned Parenthood clinic out there, there's 20 community health centers. Well, it's sort of true. I mean, keep in mind, you know, if you want a pap smear or a mammogram, you got to go to, to, well, you don't have to go to Planned Parenthood, but Planned Parenthood is one of your options, or if you want birth control counseling or even birth control. But the uh, 20 to 1 federal community health centers that, uh, that Paul Ryan is quoting, that includes dentists' offices. Yes, dentists are community health care providers. I don't know if you want to go to your dentist to get an IUD. It seems like, you know, the wrong end. But, um, you know, apparently in Paul Ryan's world, that works. Um, uh, homeless shelters, these are considered community health centers by Paul Ryan. So, the, you know, all the homeless shelters around America are considered, you know, well, okay, yeah, I'm going to go down to the health, uh, down to the homeless center and, you know, get a, get a pap test. 
Uh, food banks. Food banks are community health centers, according to Paul Ryan. He counts them in, the, in that total. So, uh, you know, it's been a long time since I went to a food bank to get, to get my Im immunization or my vaccine or my, you know, or, yeah, but, you know, any woman who wants her HPV vaccine, hey, go to your community health bank. Oh, and cosmetic surgeons, all the plastic surgeons in the country, they're considered community health providers. Right. And mental health clinics. Okay. Now, to the best of my knowledge, none of these places offer contraceptive services. And in fact, this uh, from a, a piece in, in Huffington Post by Laura Bassett, she writes, in 2014, federally qualified health, center, uh, health centers only provided about a third of the contraceptive services that Planned Parenthood did, according to the Congressional Research Service, which is, I mean, the Congressional Research Service is just purely a library function that, uh, that operates on a completely nonpartisan basis and answers to members of Congress. Yeah, one third. And the average wait time for an appointment at these health centers is more than twice the wait time of Planned Parenthood, excuse me, which could be deadly for a woman like Jamie Benner, who found a lump in her breast in 2013. Benner, then unemployed and insured member of two in rural upstate New York, says that when she called her local Planned Parenthood clinic to tell them she felt a lump, a lump they shuffled around their appointments and got her in the same day. They found a, they did a breast exam and referred her to a radiologist, and then she discovered she had, a bre had an aggressive breast cancer. It was already in her lymph glands. The mastectomy saved her life. She says, without Planned Parenthood, I would be dead. Literally, where I live, everything is a three-week to two-month wait list. I wouldn't be able to get in anywhere, anytime, and no one would have helped me get Medicaid. I would be dead. So apparently, this is this is you know part of the new the new Republican health care plan. The way that Planned Parenthood, by the way, gets their money is by accepting Medicaid payment for services. So if a poor woman who is on Medicaid, say, you know, working, working a couple of jobs, but, you know, is, is making so little that she qualifies for Medicaid, if she goes into Planned Parenthood and, you know, gets whatever kind of, you know, women's health services are, are that she pers personally needs, then, you know, just like just like somebody on Medicare or with health insurance, you go to the doctor's office, you go to a clinic, you give them your insurance card. She she would present her Medicaid information, you know, her Medicaid number, and they'd bill Medicaid. That's how they get their money. So you've got, I mean, here we've got all these healthcare centers all over the country that are specifically set up to meet the needs of women. And all these men in Congress, all these Republican men in Congress want to say, no, Medicaid dollars can no longer be used to pay for contraceptive services, for mammograph, for, for you know, breast exams, for preventative health care, none of that kind of stuff. Trump care looks like it's really going to work out well, right? As long as you are wealthy and male and presumably white. But, you know, the wealthy part, I think, is the important part. Uh, this is this is fascinating. Adam Weinstein uh, over at TaskAndPurpose.com uh, wrote an article, How much health care can you buy for the price of an iPhone? Uh, you know, if Jason Chaffetz said, hey, don't buy an iPhone, buy health insurance, right? You can get 5% of an appendectomy. These are all Florida prices. Uh, apparently, uh, um, uh, Adam lives in, in Florida. Uh, in Florida, an average appendectomy costs $17,900. Uh, let's see, you can pay for uh, two-thirds of an allergy injection treatment, one-fifth of a breast biopsy, almost an entire IUD, 8% of one childbirth, about half of a colonoscopy. You can buy one whole CAT scan of your head for the cost of an of a iPhone. You can make three visits with a diabetes specialist that's typically billed at 266 per hour. You can get one uh, MRI of your knee. And uh, if you have cancer, it, you can get four trips to your oncologist. That's assuming that you're not buying any drugs. One cancer-fighting radiation treatment, almost. And two and a half pregnancy ultrasounds. Right. Somehow, you know, I don't like this picture.